Hey y'all, Zana Alexander. Welcome back to the basement as I'm trying to squeeze in amongst all of the family time and whatnot, an episode of Lucifer season one, episode eight. And we just, we just, we had, we had, and we lost the wings. Okay. It was requested. Here are my, I don't know if I can show you where, here are my wings that I wore this weekend when I was cleaning the house, getting ready for Easter festivities. Hello, I don't think I can wear them during the whole episode though, cause they're very, um, wide. <laughs> but here they are. And we lost, those wings were gorgeous. They were gorgeous. Now, Maze has a little feather and a little mint tin. <laughs> Does this mean somehow they can magically sprout again? <laughs> but Lucifer has has committed to never going back. Question, question. I had said last episode that if Lucifer doesn't go back, God needs to make another plan. Because what if something happened to Lucifer just in general? Don't know how, but just in general, that he couldn't be, be in charge of hell. Wouldn't he have a backup plan? And maybe that's what Amenadiel was. He was the backup. And Amenadiel doesn't like it. He's resentful. And in not taking it well. And that's why he's working so hard to get loose for a back. Because he is the backup. He's the backup. What a bitch. <laughs> he's so, so unangelic. Okay, but I'm excited to get to it and I know you are all as well. So thank you so much for being with me. We are going to get under the big cozy blanket. And yes, I do have a space heater. I got a little space heater. I don't know if you can see it, but it's plugged in. My little tiny space heater to take the chill off the air. And I'm finishing the bottle of wine I started yesterday. Um, I have all of you. You're going to remember full episode watch along is available on Patreon. Thank you all so much for being with me and let's get to it. Chloe, this can mean a lot of things. It means a cop knew this secret passageway existed. Oh, we know which cop. We know which cop. Or at least I've got a strong suspicion. I love the song. Cute. Cute. Everyone's got extra wings now. Is this Lucifer's idea or Maze's idea? <laughs> Maze, you haven't wished me happy birthday. Is it his birthday? birthday. Well, I do now. Burn my wings, I feel reborn. It's my birthday this week. <laughs> Is she bringing him a gift? She brought a date. Did she? Oh. <laughs> Wait, why has he got a jar of green goo? We brought you a birthday gift. <laughs> Whiskey with a pickle juice chaser. It's our station's birthday tradition. Lovely. How can I refuse? Can I refuse? Can I refuse? And we'll always think less of you. Oh, it's pickle juice. That is the most neon green pickle juice I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. It's not bad, is it? Briny. It's terrible. Let's find May. She needs to try this bizarre concoction. She loves her salty aftertaste. No, we're just stopping by. We have a department thing, department thing to go to. Happy birthday, Miss. He has feelings. He has emotion. I should say emotions. He's had feelings. Now he's experiencing emotions. Here we go. You and I need to talk. Sure, Malcolm. Alone. You back with this guy? Oh, this was before. How long was I out? So the breakup was before. Interesting. I thought it might have been because of what happened afterwards. Give you a hard time. <laughs> you finally got your sense of humor back, huh? He's healing fast. Much to his chagrin. The partner who will not die. <sighs> Heaven didn't want him and hell couldn't keep him. You got no idea. So I, I may have been out of line last time I was here. But I did send flowers. Oh, did he? And a contractor? And now myself, so save the best gift till last. 
Not enough? Huh? You can invite a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you think I'd be mad? Was it because of this? <laughs> I thought he punched a hole in the other side of the wall. Our last session was a breakthrough. You're finally getting in touch with your emotions. What's bothering you right now? Well, right now I'm experiencing a very odd feeling. It's jealousy. It's like a fat man sitting on my chest, but not in a fun way. And when is that happening? Well, I'm... When you're with Chloe? Yes. You're jealous. I'm the one who inspires passion in others. I mean, you know that. Mm, don't I ever. Thank you. That's the appropriate response. Wow, that was a power shift right there for half a second. You could fix the detective. How would I do that? Well, heal her douche fixation, obviously. <laughs> and she stays away from her ex. That's not how therapy works. <laughs> <gasps> Look at those shoes. Dear, someone's session went poorly. Therapy twice in one day. So L.A. of me. <laughs> no forced entry. Killer most likely knew the Vic. The weapon was improvised. Seems like a crime of passion. Ooh, right up Lucifer's alley. Have you ever seen a therapist? If, you know, if you're pent... <laughs> <laughs> Let's just focus on the case, shall we? <laughs> well, I will once it's interesting. I love that cutaway to the photographer. Cheat a therapist. They yeah, encourage couples to cheat to save their marriages. You can imagine how many people want to kill him. That's the wife, Alexandra. She was out of town and just got back to find her husband dead. Did she just get out of from in from out of town? Your husband was the cheat a therapist. Wait, who's the guy with her? I'm Detective Decker. This is my associate, Mr. Morningstar. <laughs> Jonathan Medina, <laughs> yeah, colleague yeah. of Dr. Shaw's. Every one of her husband's patients is a suspect. Oh, does that mean we get to dive into patient files, read the deepest, darkest secrets of L.A.'s most unfaithful? No, we can't look at them without a psychologist to protect patient confidentiality. Perfect. I am just a psychologist. Oh, the pieces are falling so conveniently in place. Plus, it's out of our hands. Court appointed. A judge needs to sign off. Who's the judge? <laughs> Wonderful. Wow! I see you brought your gavel like I asked. He didn't just go to ask. <laughs> he asked. Ooh, objection, Your Honor. Oh, he asked in a very Lucifer type way. Mm. Hmm. Now, remember our deal. You have to fix the detective's broken douche meter whilst we investigate this crime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never agreed to that. Oh, come now. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer. Ah, speak of the me. <laughs> speak of the me. What did you do? Not what, but who, if you must know. But I try not to kiss and tell. We need someone impartial, which means not trying to get in your pants. Who's there? Are you even listening to me? Not really, look. A new doctor's moved in. <gasps> Dr. Canaan. How biblical. You're really in therapy. Why is that so surprising? You're the least reflective person I know. I have layers. I'm like an onion. Everything okay? Yes, Linda, no, everything's I'm absolutely, I'm just absolutely. I found something. Hello. What is it? A patient named Richard Kester. You gonna say this out in the hallway where anybody can overhear? Get back inside. Dr. Shaw's patients seem remarkably happy with him. Oh, do they now, see? Cheetah therapy works. Maybe you should have tried it with Detective Douche. Maybe. Be the dude. I don't understand all this jealousy talk. I mean, why covet something someone else has? Why not just take it? Oh, because it's never that easy. Well, it is for me. I, uh, I may have overstepped earlier in regards to Detective Douche. So why did you two separate anyway? Yes, please. Why not all the way? Why are you dragging it out? The job was more important to him than me and Trixie. But lately, something's changed. He. He makes time for me. He makes time for us. Make time for Trixie and Chloe. It's about Richard. I wanted to warn you. He may be unstable. 
possibly dangerous. I don't mean to you, I mean to himself. Oh, that's again timing. This is terrible. You can't stop me. What? Oh, no, I'm not here to stop you. If you want to jump, go for it. Okay, here it goes. Now, I do have one question before you pop off. You see, I'm trying to understand jealousy. It's a new concept to me. And you, dear Ricky, are the perfect person to explain it. Pull me back up! Pull me up, please! Oh, God. Yeah, I'd save your breath if I were you. <laughs> back to the matter in hand. Now, you were so jealous that you murdered Dr. Shaw. Can you help me understand why? How could you say that? I was about to jump because he's dead. Don't fib. Why? And he got me through my divorce, bankruptcy, the death of my parrot. Oh, I've just realized you're not jealous, are you? You're just sad. <laughs> the way he said that, oh, you're just sad. <laughs> need to know, what good are you? Aren't you supposed to tell me that I have a lot to live for? Well, I wish I could, Ricky, but your life sounds incredibly bleak. <laughs> I think I'm ready to go in now. Well, I wasn't asking, but... Uh... All right, come on, quick as you can. Come on, chop, chop. <laughs> How did this happen? Poor Sandy. Who's Sandy? Dr. Shaw's wife, Alexandra. Her friends all call her Sam. And she knows and that. And with your therapist's wife. So how open was his relationship <laughs> therapy? Hmm? That's just how the Shaws are. They go above and beyond. I just ran into her two days ago. Did he Sandy know? Sandy was planning a surprise for Dr. Shaw and everything. What was the surprise? Are you sure about that? Yeah. Yeah, she was out of town. Alexandra told us she was in Phoenix. Dr. Martin, what are we doing here? We're closed. You must be Maze. You're just as Lucifer described. So you're the doctor. Oh, call me Linda. Pleasure to meet you. I've seen that look in women before. Won't end well. You'll end up like all the others. Trash left by the side of the road. Interesting. Well, go, I find go to work, Linda. Rude, go to work. They feel powerless in their own lives. Terrified of not being in control. But that's not you, I'm sure. I like you. Turns out Mrs. Shaw flew to Phoenix, but rented a car and drove back a couple days early. So dear sweet Sandy was here just in time for the murder. Wait, Alexandra Shaw goes by Sandy? Do you know these people? The doctor had a female patient who was stalked by someone with the initials SS. Why conceal someone's identity in private notes? If she was stalking one of her husband's female patients... Then maybe Dr. Shaw was engaged in his own open relationship therapy. Sandy found out... With a patient? Oh, yeah, tell him I'll be there as soon as I can. That was dispatch. Dan's phone died and he wants me to meet him at my place. But apparently it's urgent. Oh, how convenient. What next? He spills something on his shirt and he has to take it off. No, 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 no. That's you, Lucifer. Unbelievable. You see what I'm dealing with now, don't you? I think I do, actually. <laughs> it's worse than I realized. Thank you. Boy, you. Hey, Dan. Did you find <gasps> out? That is not Dan. How did you get in, Malcolm? How did you get in? Just wanted to talk. I know you're still looking into Palmetto. Well, guess what? So am I. I put that to bed a long time ago. That's the mm. best you got? Come on. Palmetto stinks. I should know. I was there. I was buying information. Then we both got shot. And I think it was a cop who shot me. Why do you think it was a cop? That's what I was paying Audi for. Intel on someone crooked at our station. But Ooh. I think he or she got to me first. I only called you to try and help. Really? Yeah, really. Listen, Decker, they pulled the plug on me. He almost died. He was supposed to die. It made me appreciate the time I've got here. But whoever we were investigating, they're still out there. 
And they clearly don't have a problem shooting cops. Especially ones that live and can tell tales. Eunice found Sandy Shaw in a car in a parking structure. Oh, well. Was she alive? What is with your recent obsession with my love life? Obsession? Oh, it's awfully <laughs> defensive. Probably indicates deeper issues, wouldn't you say? I agree. Why are you so defensive, Lucifer? Good question. A two, Doctor. Lucifer, <laughs> you asked me to analyze the situation. No, I asked you to help figure out what's wrong with her. She's a woman balancing a lot on her plate, and as far as I can tell, doing a fantastic job. Why, thank you. You're right, Lucifer. She's amazing. No, she's verbal Ebola. Where's the button to put the glass up? <laughs> and Dr. Linda, you should really join us more often. <laughs> so you lied to us. You were in town the day your husband died. Yes, but it's not This is a weird spot to have this conversation. You came here driven by some kind of desire, didn't you? It's disgusting. Oh. In my car. Did a kick. Poop. What? Oh. Bags and bags of it. What? Why? Is she a fertilizer? What were you gonna do with it? I was going to throw it at Tiffany. <gasps> That's the patient you were accused of stalking. She's in a group therapy session right now for my husband's clients. My husband's colleague, Dr. Medina, called me. Okay, so he told you that your husband was cheating. He had no idea. He just called to see if Bernie wanted to grab a last-minute drink. But Bernie was supposed to already be with Dr. Medina. That's when I knew my husband lied to me. <laughs> the problem is he fell in love with her. I lied to him about my trip, and then I drove back from Phoenix to see what he was doing. Mm, or who, who he was doing. I didn't kill him. I just wanted him back. No, anything back on the 999 key? I'm sorry, Chloe. I couldn't get any prints off of it. Thanks. You couldn't just go from locker to locker to see which one it opened? Numbingly average, isn't it? I wouldn't say that. You're supposed to be on my side, you know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Medina. Thank you for coming. <gasps> That's Dr. Medina. Did they introduce him as Dr. Medina? I don't remember. That's a great idea. There's so very much to discuss, so let's start with the most important thing, shall we? Me. Me. Oh, there we go! <laughs> Why are they arresting her or taking her away? Once again, Lucifer disappears. I think the case may have hit a little too close to home. He's grown quite a bit since working with you. I'm not sure I'm the reason. I think you've really helped him. I thought you were sleeping with him. Oh, I am. Oh. <laughs> is, um, is that ethical? No. No, it's not. <laughs> I can't stop myself. <laughs> I think it's time I did. <laughs> the cheater therapist turned out to be terrible at cheating. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he tell Dr. Medina he was using him as a cover story? Maybe he did. But Ms. Shaw said that Dr. Medina had no idea about the affair. Yeah, so he conveniently told her everything she needed to know to figure it out. We need to talk to Dr. Medina. Mm -hmm. Which, and somehow, out of all that, they've decided that I'm jealous. What do you think? Eh? Yes. <laughs> so wait, you're the devil? Yes, yes please, <laughs> keep up. Well, you say you uh, burned your wings. Wow, he went back through the whole tale. <laughs> Uh, yeah. She was going to throw poop at me? Well, this isn't about you, <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> this is not about you. God. <laughs> You're right. So what, what makes you jealous? <gasps> what do you desire? The person to ask. Mm-hmm. I, I want Sandy. But she didn't want you, did she? Sandy loved her husband, so you killed him, didn't you? Shut up! <gasps> Solved it, haven't I, eh? Haven't I? Oh, jeez! So that's a yes. <laughs> and I tried to tip her off, but no matter what he did, she still loved him. No, no, not that. This. Right here. You've just given me the perfect example of unbridled jealousy. Not the woman that you loved was with someone else, someone you thought wasn't worthy of her. 
But no matter what you did, she never saw you the way you wanted her to. It's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. You just made me realize something. You gotta get rid of Dan. That my situation and yours are absolutely nothing alike. I was right, not jealous. Drop your weapon. Oh, jeez. <gasps> oh! Did you seriously just bite me? He's the killer. Thank you, Lucifer. <laughs> Uh, I think your conclusion of the situation, Lucifer, is slightly not correct. So if Tom Ellis doesn't smoke, who starts his cigarettes for him? You didn't see any similarity between yourself and Jonathan? You heard some of that, did you? The tail end. Had to get a confession. Whoever shot him knew about Palmetto, but he says that no one should have known he was there. Well, you found him then. So how did you track him? Partners on the force shared GPS locators in their gear so that they can find each other in emergencies. Which means Malcolm's partner knew he was there too. Tony Palucci knew. Oh, Lucifer's excited about this. Well, we're going to do this right now. We're going to do this now. The bar's closed. Maybe he decided to keep the party going. This is a trap. That's a trap. You have to stop doing that. It was unlocked. This is a trap. <laughs> we'll go in there Another all G by ourselves. Why would you shout your location? Oh, no. Just let him know where you are so he can shoot at you. This is very interesting camera style. <gasps> well, good thing she does have Lucifer with her as a witness. But I don't think he did this to himself. At least you can see what he was thinking. Dan. Did Dan do it? See the bad guy all along? Found a suicide note. Did you? In his handwriting? Malcolm was on to him, so Palucci shot him. When Malcolm woke up, Palucci couldn't take the guilt anymore. I don't think guilt was within Palucci. He didn't seem like the guy who seemed sorry about anything. Palucci was an ass. But this, I can't imagine this. Something still feels off. Hello, Doctor. Thank you for coming. She gonna break up with him. We made a breakthrough. And I think with that in mind, we should keep our relationship professional from now. Oh, very well. If, uh, if you think it's best. I do. One last thing before I go. Yes. Dr. Kanan down the hall, what's he like? Uh, thoughtful. No, no. Spiritual. No, no, no. Little sanctimonious visuals visuals Two black voice like an angel oh you know him mm-hmm oh, all too well <laughs> thank you you know for having my back and for everything he's gonna make a move there's a move to be made Welcome. Hands. Touching hands. Reaching out. Touching me. Oh, you're yeah, touching you. This looks awkward. You should go. Because it looked awkward as hell. Yeah, I should. I'm sorry. I got thoughts.
right. <laughs> Evening, Dan. Mm-hmm. What do you want? Just wanted to congratulate you on closing Palmetto. You and that smart, sexy lady of yours caught the guy who shot me. Did they? That's what the confession said, right? How long did it take you to write it? <laughs> Forever. I mean, I'm so not a word guy. <laughs> I should be thanking me. Wow. Well, I could have told everyone the truth. You shot me. Why didn't you? Because <gasps> I like you. And I can't imagine what had happened to your life if people found out the truth. Besides, you wouldn't want anything to mess with your pretty little family now that you're working to fix things, right? You and I, we want to be best friends. Fun, right? We're having fun now. Looser's there to fuck everything in that room. Everything. <laughs> That's what that look in his eyes said. Spoiler alert, a menadeal found Dr. Linda. <gasps> oh, Mage knew that. I wonder how my dear angelic brother got such a wickedly clever idea wow i did it to protect you i told you whatever the danger i'll be there to stop it whether you see it coming or not you betrayed me mace and not for my own good you did it for yourself yes she did lucifer i don't want to hear it because you and me we're done oh you broke his trust Focus trust. Oh, there's so much. So much and nothing. Mm. I have wine, adult thoughts, stream of consciousness. It's just gonna bleh. Dan shot Malcolm. Did Malcolm? Malcolm did not know for sure it was Dan. Cause he would have said to Chloe, I have an idea who shot me. But if Dan shot Malcolm, Dan let Chloe take the shit from the rest of the guys for saying he was dirty. Who's really dirty, Malcolm? Yes, Dan, yes, both, yes, no. What the and was Pellucci a part of any of it? And why wouldn't Malcolm go after Dan? Dan then? Switching gears because <laughs> Dan and Chloe, the only little hint we have gotten about what broke them up was that Dan put the job before the family. Why this doesn't make sense to me is because Chloe has the same job. So she would have firsthand experience. And even if she said, well, I managed to juggle X, Y, Z, you should match me as well. I think I would believe that better if they had different jobs, but because they have the exact same job and are practically tied at the hip anyway, this whole he puts the job before our family, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And why aren't they just divorced? What is, why are they dragging it out? And it can't just be for Trixie. That's not, it's Trixie darling, certainly, yes, fine, but that's not good enough of a reason to have them mm, mozzarella cheese stick this thing. So because that's so fuck, and then Malcolm going, are you with him? And she says, not really. That was enough for Malcolm to go, okay, I won't mess with the guy who tried to shoot me. And instead I will kill my partner who may, huh? something's amiss there. And does this whole Palmetto thing have jack squat to do with Lucifer and his journey to becoming the most Luciferiest 
of his luciferness him becoming his essence he's got his identity i'm the leader the under rum on a break to well, who is lucifer inside and outside does this palmetto case have jack squat to do with that i don't know so the fact that it's taking up more and more time i don't know if i'm annoyed or intrigued yeah there we go that's for that dr linda is awesome i need a happily ever after for dr linda please she needs it right, right now. I need her to have a happily ever after. So when Lucifer tells Maze they're done, what does that mean? He has released her from whatever job she has. They're no longer friends. She's definitely, absolutely now no longer confident. She's confidant, I should say, Con not confident, confidant. She is employee only, just an employee, not the employee. What does that mean? And do those tables turn? And does she grab that little feather from her little case and poof, throw it at him to make him become angel? So yes, I'm doing a lot of right now. But what do we have coming next? Episode nine. And a few of you all got really excited about, wait till you get to episode nine. Where are we going to go? Where are we going? Don't tell me what happens because I'm going to watch it this week. I promise. Hopefully sooner rather than later, but soon, but soon. So you have to hit subscribe. There's a bell somewhere. So when I drop the video, ba -ping, you'll know first thing. And it won't be at midnight. Seriously, I meant to drop videos at like 6, 6, 15 my time. I don't know why YouTube does this YouTube -y thing, but it'll be a reasonable hour. And I want you to be there. So in the meantime, until then, please take care of yourselves. If you haven't, take five seconds to breathe. Go get something to eat that's not a mini Cadbury egg or a Starburst jelly bean. And then come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, you all. And until next time.